Hey, good morning once again, everybody. This is the second video I've done this morning, but I felt I had to do this video for a reason. Now, I've got about 15 and a half minutes left on here, so I'm going to try to make this as quick as I can. If I, if I don't, I apologize. But I just recently saw a video by one of the wrestling gurus. It was the guru, the first edition of the Guru Lounge. And he did uh, a discussion with another uh, YouTube uh, user named Ace who, well, basically a YouTube user whose channel is called Ace's Wrestling Corner. And they talked about three subjects. One of the subjects I already talked about in my previous video I did this morning, which was the Royal Rumble. But the other two subjects that they talked about was how to make TNA better and Super Cena. Well, I'm going to start with the latter part of that. I'm going to start with the last topic they talked about, and that's Super Cena. Now, now, some, now, they basically came out and said they don't like the fact that Cena has always been winning his feuds, that he's been basically going over everybody in his feuds. And they also don't like the fact that Cena could be one of the people, if not the person, that wins the Royal Rumble. They don't want that to happen. Well, unfortunately, that may be what happens, but you know what? There's a reason for it. Because I don't know how many times this has been discussed. I don't know how many times fans, wrestling insiders, people at places like No DQ, PWI Torch, Wrestling News World, the Pro Wrestling Report, the PWR, I don't know how many times people have had to say this, but I will say it again. The reason John Cena goes over in his feuds against the likes of a Wade Barrett, but of a, the likes of a Batista, Randy Orton, the reason he goes over them is because, as much as people hate to hear it, John Cena is the Hulk Hogan of today's generation. He is the Hulk Hogan of today's WWE. His Cena Nation that he calls out to, that's the Hulkamaniacs. That's the Hulkamania of this year, the Cena Nation. They're the Hulkamaniacs and the Hulkamania. Because if you want to look at it reversing wise, if you want to put the shoe on the other foot, Hulk Hogan was the John Cena of the 80s and the early to mid 90s. His Hulkamaniacs, his Hulkamaniacs and Hulkamania was the Cena nation of that time. So you get the idea. Now you might be asking yourself, why is that so? Why are people making those comparisons? Why is Cena in that role? I'll tell you why. It goes back to one match that I have on DVD. It was the last Raw of the two. It was the last Raw of the 2005 draft. Because back then in 2005, they did a weekly draft. They did a month-long draft where every week a new superstar. A superstar from either SmackDown or Raw would appear on the new show as, in, as a new member. Well, the main event of that night was Hulk Hogan, was John Cena and Shawn Michaels taking on Chris Jericho, Christian, and Tomko. And who was the mystery partner that Shawn Michaels had made a call to? None other than Hulk Hogan. Now, even though Hulk Hogan won the match for his team, he basically, that night, if you look during towards the end of the match, he does the, you can't see me, I think, to either, I think it's to Tomko. And by doing this, that's Hulk Hogan's way of passing the torch to John Cena. That's, by having Shawn Michaels team with John Cena, or having John Cena team with Shawn Michaels and Hulk Hogan, you're basically having two legends one Hall of Famer and one future Hall of Famer passing the torch to John Cena and saying it's your time, it's your generation. It's your time, it's your Hulkamania. Run with it. That's what happened in that match. That's what happened in that match. And when Hulk Hogan let John Cena pose with him, when John Cena was the one that encouraged it, but Hulk Hogan had John Cena pose with him, that court, again, that was 
Hulk Hogan's way of passing the torch to Cena. And that's why many people look at John Cena as the Hulk Hogan of this generation. Why they look at his Cena Nation, Asian of is seen the nation as the Hulkamania and the Hulkamaniacs of this generation because of that reason and that's why John Cena always wins his views because he's the Hulk Hogan of this generation he ain't no Super Cena he ain't no Superman that's just fans with that's just a lot of fans excuses in all due respect that's just a lot of fans excuses who don't like John Cena you know uh, way of saying that's just well basically that's just a, the excuse of saying John Cena is the Hulk Hogan they don't want to acknowledge the fact that he is the Hulk Hogan of this generation and that's the reason he always wins his wins his feuds goes over in his feuds instead of letting those that he feuds against go over him so you get what I'm saying John Cena the reason he's considered as many as the Super Cena of WWE and always wins his views is because in actuality he's the Hulk Hogan of this generation. His Cena Nation is the Hulkamania and the Hulkamaniacs of this generation. Alright? And again it all goes back to that last to that last Raw in June of 2005 which was also the last Raw which was also the last night of the draft of the month long draft for Raw. That that six-man tag that he was in, in when Hulk Hogan did the "You Can't See Me" to Tomko and then had Ho Cena pose with him, that was Hogan's way of passing the torch to Cena. That was Shawn Michaels' way when Shawn Michaels teamed up with Cena and saying, "I'm passing the torch to you as well." But J Shawn Michaels wouldn't totally pass the torch yet. He partially passed it, but Hulk Hogan passed his torch to Cena, and then a couple years later, at WrestleMania 23. Shawn Michaels, in his matches against John Cena at WrestleMania, passed the torch to Cena. So, you know, argue with that if you will, but that's the truth. That's why John Cena is considered by many as the Hulk Hogan of this generation, why his Cena Nation is the Hulkamania and the Hulkamaniacs of this generation, because I believe of that very match five and a half years ago. And also, despite what you may say about John Cena, and the fact, and I'll tell you the truth, I am a fan out of respect. Not, I'm not a fan that's like, oh, there's John Cena, yay! No, I'm a fan out of respect. Out of respect of the fact that despite what you think of the guy, if he wanted to be self-centered, instead of being a, if he wanted to be self-centered, instead of being a nine-time world champion, or a nine-time champion, he would probably be more of a 15-time world champion by now, right? But that's not him. That's not him. And do you think, honestly, John Cena wants to always have a championship? Probably not. But he also knows that WWE, the reason they put it on him is because they know it sells. It attracts people. And it's kind of like a role reversal. Like when a heel, like say The Miz right now, has the WWE Championship, people, they know people will pay money, watch, will pay money for a pay-per-view or to go to an arena to a live event or watch Monday Night Raw just to see someone, someone dethrone The Miz and get the WWE title off of him. But the roles are reversed when Cena wins because they know Fans who are against Cena will sell out arenas, will buy pay-per-views, will watch Monday Night Raw to see someone, either it's a heel or another babyface, take the title off Cena. That's why they know. That's why they always put it on Cena as well. But they also know that just like Hulk Hogan, he is money. People will follow him. Now, now, also. John Cena is the kind of guy that would look at someone like, say, Daniel Bryan and say, put Daniel Bryan over. Because he was behind Daniel Bryan all the way. He, I think, honestly, I think he was one of the reasons Daniel Bryan got back in. Into WWE, if he was fired, if you will. Now, i got a little bit more time here. 
Now, as far as TNA goes, here's what I would do to make it better. First of all, I focus on my matches at my pay-per-views. I focus on the storylines on there. I want to keep focusing on backstage segments with Flair, Bischoff, Hogan, and maybe even Dixie. I mean, maybe maybe one or two backstage segments, but not three or four or five. Okay, maybe one or two, and that's it. Maybe one at the beginning of the program and one probably towards the end, but that's it. But mainly what I would do is focus on my matches, focus on the storylines for my matches, for the upcoming pay-per-views that I have. Like the, you know, like they're trying to do with Genesis, like they're doing with Morgan and Anderson, that's a good example. You know, and other matches as well. So I would focus on that, like with Devon and Ray, focus on that. And you know, as far as Jeff Hardy goes, if you're going to take the title off him, surprise people. Surprise people at Genesis. Have, have the number one contenders match turn into a triple threat, or have Jeff Hardy defend later on that night against the winner of the number one contenders match. Get what I'm saying? And have him lose. So that way you take the title off him, and he can go take care of his personal stuff that he's going to have to plead, take care of the stuff he's got to plead guilty to later on in the month. Other things I would focus on, focus on the X Division. You, you have a new negotiation, you have a new agreement with Triple A, you have an agreement with New Japan. Bring in some of their guys. Make your X Division better than it was. Focus on your knockouts division. Focus on your knockouts division. If you're focusing on Sarita and making her into the next big thing in the knockouts division, then have her feud with Mickey James. Have Mickey James beat Madison for the title at Genesis and then have Serena face Mickey in a dream match for the Knockouts title because those two can fucking go. Those are the two Knockouts that can fucking go besides Mickey and Tara and a few others. As well as focus on trying to reveal Winter's true intentions against Angelina. You know, reveal Winter as being the obsessed stalker and whatever she is. Do that and get it over with. Reveal her as the person that had Serena attack Velvet so she can go after, so that she can team with Angelina and become tag team champions. Have that happen. Focus on that. And speaking of your t knockout tag titles, focus on them. Take some of your knockouts that you have. Team them up if you want to. Bring in some new knockouts. Team them up. Focus and strengthen that. Make it better as well as strengthen and make your tag team division better as well. Those are the things I would focus on in 2011 to make TNA better. That's what I would do. Quite honestly. And I know a lot of people would agree with me on that. So, that's all I'm going to say. Tell me what you guys think about what I just mentioned here. Do you agree? Do you not? Wrestling Gurus, Ace, Ace at Ace's Wrestling Corner, tell me what you think. Because I will be sending this video to you guys, guys to let, get your opinions. Let me know what you think. Because I think I bring up some good points on both subjects. So, till then, peace out. God bless. Have a good Wednesday.